Hi, I'm Zach, and you're watching MakeUseOf.com. Today I've got with me the Double Mic DI from Movo. This is a dual capsule condenser microphone. Uh, dual capsule, as the name suggests, meaning double mic, so you've got a front-facing and back-facing microphone, and condenser, meaning that this is a directional mic, so you're gonna get the best results if you've got it pointed directly at yourself or whatever it is you're trying to record. And this microphone is specifically designed to be compatible with iPhones, which is really exciting because iPhones and smartphones in general are getting more and more sophisticated cameras, so more and more people are gonna be using their phones to make video content. So I can see why a lot of people would be interested in a microphone like this. If you're just getting started making videos and you know that you're gonna be using your phone a lot for that, this can be a first easy purchase to up your production value. And I mean, even if you're not, uh, something as convenient as a phone attachment for like run and gun style interviews could come in handy. So does the Movo Dual Mic DI live up to its $95 price tag? Stick around and we'll go into a little more detail on what this thing can do. All right, so I'll unbox this from right here and just talk through it and then I'll cut into some close-ups too to give you a better look. Uh, this is the carrying case that it comes in. Pretty stylish, nice and sturdy, uh, but as you open it up, you'll see that most of what's in there is empty space. Which, to be fair, the mic itself is very small because uh, it's an iPhone attachment and it doesn't really need to come with many accessories like cables or chargers or batteries because it just uses the power from your phone, which is also very convenient. Love that. So the only real accessories it's coming with are these four wind socks. There's two foam ones and two fur ones, one for the front and back microphone. So the whole package, really not much to speak of beyond the microphone itself. So let's just get right into that. And the microphone itself is really small, which uh, I guess is what you would want for a phone attachment. And it's nice and compact, so easy to carry around anything. I mean, you can fit it in your pocket. And very intuitive also. It comes with an instruction manual, but you really don't even need to look at it because uh, everyone should probably recognize the Apple iPhone jack. So just plug straight into any iPhone like so. You got the back and front mics. And now when you open a voice recording app or your camera or anything like that, this will be the microphone it defaults to. So the features of the microphone itself, also very simple. You just got two switches on either side. So the first switch on this side over here, we've got a setting for plus five decibels, zero decibels, and minus five decibels. Those will basically just control the sensitivity of each mic. So if you are trying to record something that's maybe a little quiet for maybe some sound design purposes, you'd wanna go more towards the plus five. In application, I would assume that more often than not, you'd want it set to minus five. Uh, something like an attachable iPhone mic, I would think it would be used for really dynamic scenarios or if you're outdoors, if it's windy, if it's noisy, you'd want to pick up less of the white noise and uh, probably just have it be less sensitive. And the switch on this side, the other switch, has a setting for F, S, and B. That's front mic, back mic, and stereo if you wanna have both microphones active at the same time. A scenario where maybe you'd want both of these on is if you're maybe recording a conversation, so you could have one pointing front, one pointing back. And then really the only other thing on this thing is there's a little headphone jack if you're wanting to check audio levels or hear what it sounds like uh, in the mic. Maybe this is a little nitpicky, but I feel like it's worth pointing out since this is an iPhone compatible accessory. The headphone jack is for like a standard auxiliary headphone, which uh, iPhones don't use that. So if you are if you have Apple headphones or like headphones that came with your phone, you can't plug them into the mic. You'll have to have, you know, a standard pair of headphones. So on paper, that pretty much covers everything that this microphone should be capable of. So now the only thing left to do is test it out. Okay, so we're gonna put the Movo mic to the test in conditions that I think would be most applicable in. So outside, uh, it's actually a very windy day. You can see some flags waving behind me and I'm by a super busy intersection where there should be a ton of noise. Uh, this is just my onboard microphone with my iPhone, so you're probably getting a lot of that right now. All right, so now we've got the Movo equipped. I've got the windsock on and uh, it's set to minus five decibels. So. It's got just about all the noise canceling capability it could have equipped right now. Uh, and it's just the front facing mic, so it's pointed towards me. And since I am facing the street, or facing away from the street like this, you're probably picking up a lot of that. All right, and so one more test with the Movo. The street, so hopefully the directional part of the mic 
should help since it, it should just pick up noise in the direction it's coming from. So it should be getting a lot of my voice and a lot less of the background noise and the wind in the cars. I just wanted to see how affecting the decibel impact, um, what it picks up as far as like my voice in the background noise goes. So this is the Movo with the decibel settings at nothing. So um, no noise canceling and nothing like picking up extra decibels. And just for good measure, this is it with plus five decibels. So uh, makes it easier to hear quiet stuff, but in a noisy setting like this, it should be just picking up a lot more of the noise that we don't want to hear. One last test. Just for comparison's sake, I've got a little lapel mic with me. It does have a little wind cap on. And I've balanced the audio so that hopefully this should sound pretty good. So from that quick little field test, you could probably tell that I did have a few issues using this thing. Like I said in the first clip, I was just recording myself selfie style on my iPhone, and then I switched over to using the mic in the second example. And I did see some marginal improvement in the audio quality, but honestly, it was kind of hard to even tell the difference between having it in and having it out for that first one. And I was really hoping that that third example was gonna be where we started to see some improvement with this. I was trying to take advantage of the microphone's directional capabilities by turning away from the street and having the microphone face away from the source of all the noise. But that was where it started clipping out really bad. And I think that those clipping issues are actually a result of the mic disconnecting from my phone entirely. As you can see, when it's plugged in, there's actually a decent amount of wiggle room. And any wiggling like that is just gonna cause it to pop and crack really loudly or just cut out audio entirely which must have been what happened for that fifth example where I actually had the decibel level set to the highest, but it was noticeably quieter than the decibel set at zero. So that must have just been my iPhone's native microphone again. And even with the way that the mic is situated on the phone, I think there's gonna be a lot of instances where it could get bumped or wiggle or whatever, depending on how you're holding it, and that's gonna be really bad for consistency. And that last example with the lapel mic is a best case scenario. The whole point of having something like this is that you're not always gonna have the time to be able to hook up a lapel to somebody. So the outdoor field test did not go super well for the Movo double mic. I have recorded a few other things for it inside, just a couple voice memos to test the differences between the decibel sensitivity and my phone's onboard speaker. But even with those, I think that the difference in audio quality was marginal. So I don't think there's really much else to say about the Movo Double Mic DI. Going into this, I wasn't really sure what to expect because $95 for a microphone, I mean, that can get you a pretty decent microphone by any standard. I think the microphone that I'm recording this video on was only like $40 or something like that. So 95, and especially in the context of iPhone compatible microphones, I know there are definitely alternatives that are like $15 or something like that. So for 95 bucks, I was expecting something a lot more substantial. Even if I could get this thing to reliably and consistently stay connected to my phone and avoid all the popping and clipping, for $95, you can get a really high quality microphone. Whether you want it to be compatible with a phone or not is up to you, but if you're in the market for a microphone and willing to spend that much money, I don't think I could recommend the Movo double mic in good conscience. Thank you for watching. If you found this review helpful, feel free to leave a comment or a like on the video and we'll catch you in the next one.